Hello, solutionaries. My name is Kande Yumkela. I was born in a small village in Sierra Leone called Kichon. And of course, I have moved on. I went to university in Sierra Leone, went to university in the United States, taught in the United States, came back to Sierra Leone, served as a minister, moved on to the United Nations, became director general of United Nations Industrial Development Organization. Later on, uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon appointed me as the Chief Executive Officer for Sustainable Energy for All. And I had these wonderful experiences around the world, from, from a small village in Kitchen to the higher heights of global governance. You can be the same. Very early on in my life, I realized the importance of energy. When I was in university as an undergraduate, there were many times where we didn't have enough electricity so they could not pump water up to our dormitories to wash. Then I left Sierra Leone to study in the United States, and 11 years later, I came back to serve as minister. We still had problems with lack of energy. I had to do my work many times with candles, and I never knew that, in fact, 10 years later, I would be asked by the United Nations to lead energy issues to solve the problem of energy poverty around the world. Now I'm back in my country, I represent 67,000 people in one of the poorest regions in the country. I still see the struggle, particularly of women, because they do not have electricity. I see the problem in the clinics, in the hospitals, because there is no electricity, women delivering babies at night in the dark. So the issue of energy is close to my heart, and that's why I'm a global activist for promoting energy access for the poor. The reason why we are promoting energy access, especially for poor people, it is because we are very convinced that without affordable, reliable, sustainable energy, many of the sustainable development goals cannot be achieved. You cannot have a, a good running hospital if you don't have reliable energy to make sure they can use the diagnostic equipment, they can keep the vaccine school so that when the children come in, the vaccine is ready. They can make sure the operating theaters run. You can't run the schools well because you need electricity in the school so lighting can be available, laboratories can work. You need electricity in homes when the kids come home so they can study. Especially the, the women, if you go to the villages, the two, three extra hours of light in the evening helps them, in fact, prepare what they have to take to the market the next day. So energy is crucial and Ban Ki-moon and myself used to say around the world, it is the golden thread that runs through all the sustainable development goals because energy is the ultimate enabler of all the other sustainable development goals. In 2000, when these Millennium Development Goals were launched, there was no mention of energy. It was as if we assumed that you can run hospitals, have access to clean water, create jobs without energy. So we had to start uh, in, in mid-2000 to begin to mobilize the world that, in fact, energy was very critical if you're going to achieve the Millennium Development Goals at that time. Since we knew that by 2015 there will be another set of development framework that will be introduced, we started organizing ourselves to make sure that when the new goals are defined, that in fact energy will be one of them. It was a lot of work. It took many years. We built this big advisory board of over 50 leaders in the world doing analysis for us about how energy was connected to everything else, how changes in access to energy improved lives in other countries. So we needed good analysis done. We needed good theoretical models to see, in fact, whether there's good theoretical backing to what we were saying, but more importantly, we needed evidence on the ground. So you can see that what I started 15, 20 years ago, now I'm even more energized that you, the young generation, must help all of us and your generation have a clean environment and we're saving lives by making energy access a reality for all by 2030. As young solutionaries, my advice to you is learn as much as you can. There's nothing like academic excellence. I benefited from it. I was a very good student, and then I went to some of the best universities in the United States. So that gave me the knowledge I needed. So I learned as much as I can. Second, I was always involved in activism. I always wanted to help change something. 
from undergraduate all the way to grad school. I was involved in African students' organizations in U.S. universities. I was involved in some of the protests we had against apartheid. I always wanted to be part of changing something, not for myself, but for something else. What that helped me have? Deep skills. Very important leadership skills, important communication skills, and empathy. I could put myself in somebody else's position. So I learned how to deal with people. Number three, learn to negotiate. The world is becoming very connected. We've seen the problem with COVID. It has hit everybody. It started in one small location. Now it's all over the world. So you're going to have other problems, pandemics, climate change, but also challenges of getting natural resources where you have to negotiate with other children or other adults when you're adults from other parts of the world. i give you an example. I know many of you care about the environment and we are all talking about renewable energy solutions. Well, let me tell you something. Most of the metals and minerals you're going to need to ensure that global transition to get a greener, cleaner world are in Africa. I'll give you an example. Over 50% of the cobalt in the world is in the Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo. And of course, making batteries, we have some of the, the biggest deposits of the other metals you need and rare earth metals to make batteries. If you're dreaming, for example, as Elon Musk is helping all of us dream of a world where we're having clean energy from the sun, it means your house, you can generate your own power with the batteries that he's trying to make. All that clean world, greener world, most of the resources you're gonna need are in Africa. So you have to talk to my grandchildren to work with you. You who have the knowledge, the scientific knowledge, the analytics and the, and the finance. But you know what? It can be win-win. And that's what I want to say to you. Make friends. You never know. If the guy sitting next to you is the next Bill Gates, it could be the next innovator in India, in China, in Africa. So you want to be partners across the world. And that's what we're, we're hoping for, collaboration and negotiation, and then empathizing, understanding that this world belongs to all of us, and we have to share its limited resources and your time. That competition is going to be higher. We are lucky now, but don't be like us. We've messed up. We're, we're causing too much global warming, and we're not taking care of the environment. I wish you well.